Thank you very much, Michelle. Um, Harry Hearn, um, who is a data support manager from St. George's University from London. Um, she's our guest speaker this morning. And as usual, um, we are having these drop-in sessions just to offer you a space to ask us questions, um, space to discuss and share um, some insights um, which, you, which you want to ask or, or tell us. Um, so if that's okay for you, Michelle, um, I'll give you a space just to introduce Michelle Harikaran. Um, she works as a data support manager at St. George's University of London, and she's specializing in data management for health and medical data. Uh, Michelle helps St. George's researchers to manage, store, share, and preserve their data responsibly. As part of this, she helps researchers to write data management plans, uh, tries to improve how researchers handle and share health and biomedical data, works towards optimizing organizational procedures for responsible data handling, and work with colleagues across St. George's to align data and information policies so researchers are clear about what is expected from them. Um, Michelle has background in the intersection intersections of health, communication and technology, and St. George's University is described with us since September 2019 using the basic package. So, Michelle, if you're happy to speak, um, I'm just going to give you the space now. I'm happy. Thank you very much for that. I think you said a lot about <laughs> what we do here already. Um, so I thought I'd start by giving you a bit of context to St. George's, um, because a lot of our DMP strategies are a function of the way that we work as an organization. Mm -hmm. um, so depending on how you count, we have about 350 researchers at St. George's, and that's not including our research students or clinical staff from the St. George's Hospital who perform research mm -hmm. with us. Um, I think because of these numbers, we have quite a community atmosphere or vibe here at St. George's. Mm -hmm. Most people know everyone else. So we're quite used to phone calls, emails, popping around to see someone for ad hoc training. Um, we, can, we meet over coffee a lot to discuss projects and ideas. We're mm -hmm. less used to the more formal, more general types of engagement that you find mm -hmm. in other places. Mm -hmm. uh, we have information on how to use DMP online on our website, but mm -hmm. researchers generally just call me up or email mm -hmm. directly after reading information about DMP online on our website. Mm -hmm. And that's just a function of the more verbal face-to-face -face atmosphere we have. The website mm -hmm. is just there to find the right person to talk to, and then you'll call them up. Um, similar to other people's experiences in other places, um, drop-ins don't work particularly well here. Um, mm -hmm. it, just because researchers are not always working on an application when we have a drop-in. Mm -hmm. And they prefer to contact me directly when they need me and they have a specific project that they're working on. Mm -hmm. Um, workshops are not high in demand either. Again, people just prefer to call me up when they need me and mm -hmm. I'll arrange targeted one-to-one -one training based on a project that the researcher is working on and mm -hmm. their specific needs at the time. So I'd say our services are targeted to specific projects rather than um, people. Mm -hmm. So we've integrated our DMP services into existing research administration workloads at St. George's as much as possible. And we access researchers in two ways, either at the grant application stage mm -hmm. or at the project start phase. So I'll talk about both of them and what our workflow looks like for DMPs at both of those stages. Mm -hmm. So where DMPs are required as part of a grant application, the research office would signpost researchers to me as soon as they've been contacted about an application. So the researchers and I can start working on a data management plan together. Mm -hmm. um, for researchers who are new to DMP online then, um, we would meet face to face usually, um, and I'd walk them through the system and then mm -hmm. they'd go away and draft their DMP. So they're introduced a DMP online at that point in the project when they need to use it. And once they're finished with their draft, they send it to me to review. Mm -hmm. For researchers who have already done um, a grant application with us and they're already familiar with DMP online, um, they get right to drafting the DMP and then they start, send their draft to me to review. Um, mm -hmm. In both of these cases, after a review, we might meet up briefly to discuss the feedback mm -hmm. on this. So that's how it works at the grant application stage. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of DMPs at the project start stage, we have a workflow where I receive month monthly reports from the research office on projects that are just starting up. So once I receive a, um, a new report, 
I email each new project with a targeted email based on the requirements of that specific project and funder and invite mm -hmm. the team to work with me as they manage their data during the study. Um, if we did a DMP together at the grant application stage, I'll say that you know we could work together to implement the plan that we agreed back at the grant application stage. Mm -hmm. um, if a DMP is required as a deliverable for that project, then at that point, I'll introduce the team to DMP online. And at that stage, I'll work with them to develop the plan. So that's a lot of um, mm -hmm. um, European Commission projects. Mm -hmm. And it's worth saying I get the most engagement from researchers at this stage. Mm -hmm. And that's because they're fleshing out their plan at this point. They're preparing mm -hmm. for ethics and they need to fill in the data management sections. Mm -hmm. They need actual practical support um, um, advice on storage. Or mm -hmm. they're developing um, detailed DMPs as deliverables for projects. Mm -hmm. So that's worked really well for me. I've actually had a 100% response rate on these emails, yeah. and they're all active responses. Mm -hmm. um, well, all but one has been active responses in the sense that they've come back and asked for some next steps. Can we meet up and chat about something? Mm -hmm. Can we talk about storage? Can we talk about security? Mm -hmm. They've always had a relevant question coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I've only had one response where it was, you know, thanks, Michelle, I've passed this on to the postdoc or student mm -hmm. involved in the research. So it's been, I've had lots of engagement with it. Mm -hmm. um, and the initiative has actually received praise from the deputy principal for research. And we're quite proud of that because it of actually course. raised our profile quite a bit. Pardon? Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's because he received one of the earlier um, grants as part of that process. So we contacted him. I contacted him early on and he was like, ah, I like this. And then mm -hmm. he started, you know, giving wider praise of it because mm -hmm. it was really useful um, to get that information when he needed it. Mm -hmm. So I think providing targeted project specific messaging delivered at the right time and integrated mm -hmm. into the research administration process, the routine administration process, that seems to work for us. Mm -hmm. But it's very manual work. It's very, I can um, yeah, every DMP generally comes through me. Mm -hmm. um, if I contact teams at the start of their project, I tend to get more involved in your European Commission DMPs mm -hmm. than I um, can often manage. Mm -hmm. So I'd see them at the start, we'd look at DMP online, they'd send me a draft, we'd meet, go through feedback, and sometimes I'd see another draft because this is an mm -hmm. actual deliverable. It can go on for a while. Mm -hmm. um, as my work is targeted to projects rather than people, I and sometimes see the same people more than once because mm -hmm. they're coming to me for different projects, but mm -hmm. the content of the DMPs do get better over the course of different projects. Um, the second time I see them, usually they just want to talk to me about that they're working with different kinds of data and want specific information about those data types. Mm -hmm. So that's been good. Um, so in terms of feedback, DMP Online gets really good feedback from the researchers who have used it. I think it feels really organized and professional to them, which I find is actually, it actually quite, it surprises them a bit because they didn't expect there to be an entire system devoted just to DMPs. Mm -hmm. And I think my feeling from um, talking to them is that it sort of re DMP online raises the value of DMPs for researchers. Um, mm -hmm. It gets them to stop and say, hold on a sec, this must be really important if so much effort has gone into it across so many different universities, you know, mm -hmm. putting emphasis on it. Um, at the grant application stage, our researchers have said that they like to see the guidance from their collaborator sites, so that they've got collaborators pulling that up. And I think they like the idea that we're tied into these bigger initiatives, that they can link their DMPs to other universities. Um, it does actually help build researcher trust a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but one big challenge I have um, is that some researchers come to me too late at the grant application stage. Yeah. So we have a workflow for the application where researchers are signposted to me. Um, mm -hmm. And some researchers don't come to me until they finish the draft, because what they really want from me is to review it. Mm -hmm. um, rather than before they start. Mm -hmm. At that point, they've already done something. So they ha I haven't had a chance to introduce them to DMP online mm -hmm. um, and they didn't see the guidance. So what I end up doing is copying a lot bits of the guidance back into the review because that's the stuff they missed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanna try to fix that, see if I can fix that in some way so that it gets across to them that it's better to talk to me before they even start their draft. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's how we've sort of approached engagement here at St. George's. Um, I appreciate it's very hands-on and it probably won't work in a lot of places, but it would be nice to hear what others think 
if it would work for them. Yeah, um, it sounds really interesting. So if anyone is having a question, feel free to unmute yourself or type um, if you can't speak where you are. If you're having questions for Michelle. Well, I'm Madeline from the TU Delft, and I'm yeah. just wondering uh, what about the workload? Because I, if I understand you correctly, you are the only person reviewing data management plans. And yeah. I see in, at our institution that the, that the amount of plans created is increasing significantly over the past months. Um, how is that for your organization? Um, the workload is growing, um, mm -hmm. but I think the two things, one, the fact that we have a, about 350 researchers helps in the sense that it's not, it's not over, um, and hopefully it is growing for us, but hopefully the ones I deal with now are um, people I'm going to have to deal with um, extensively in the future. It might be a less hands-on approach, hopefully going forward, but it is a lot. The second thing I should say is that I focus primarily on um, data management plans for funding applications. So it's not required for our researchers, um, for our student researchers to do it. So it's mostly part of funding and when it's required for a funding application. So that helps as well. So it's not for everyone. A lot of times we integrate ideas of DMPs in the, um, yeah, sorry. Um, in the ethics application as well, which helps me from having to do full DMPs for them, for, re for, um, for research projects that don't require um, a DMP for a grant. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, helpful, yeah. yeah. But I think I appreciate that it's not gonna work somewhere that has a lot of researchers and lots yeah. of grants going in at the same time. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you answered it. I was happy with the hands-on approach. Sorry to button. in. Are you happy with the hands-on approach or would you rather take a, you know, a, a backseat, put some distance between you and researchers, just out of curiosity? Um, I like the hands-on approach at the start. So I think if researchers are just getting started with writing data management plans and getting used to data management plans, it's nice at the start, um, like hand holding them through it. But I'm hoping over time, um, and we have seen that the data management plans get better, but I'd like them, um, I'd like to be less hands-on with the more experienced teams going forward. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's really interesting what you're doing there, and um, it, it was already answer, answered um, before, as Madeline pointed out, so it's just one person doing all of this, so um, that must be quite busy for you, Michelle. Um, and I, I, I think it's actually quite nice you're having this family atmosphere, as you said, like you're working within quite small community, so as long as it's manageable for you, you know, having people to come in and they know who to contact, I think um, that's that's quite nice and getting then as you know, 100 response to your emails as well. I think that's that's really, really nice uh, and very lucky at the same time because sometimes I think researchers can just miss those emails um, easily. But yeah, thank you very much for the insight. If there are any other questions uh, or points you would like to um, have, um, either unmute yourself or um, just you can type in the chat as well uh, but if not um, feel feel free um, to just if something else pops into your mind as we go on with the session just feel free um, to, to write a message and, and we can just pick up in there. Um, there isn't uh, too much else to cover today um, because we had just our last call I think it was two weeks ago so Quite a lot of happened and not at the same time, uh, but um, I just wanted to mention, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen, but we were planning a training and a user group in London on the 23rd of April. We are still discussing in here what's going to happen with the travels and whether we might change this to just be as a remote uh, user group and training. I'll keep everyone posted and quite a few of you have been already in touch with me about 
whether it's going to be possible to join remotely. I think it's one of the options we are definitely exploring at the moment. And as soon as I'll hear from, I think it's a decision of Edinburgh University and then Kevin and Sarah, but probably the whole country seeing what's going to happen over the course of the couple of weeks. I'll keep everyone posted. But I think even having a remote uh, training um, and user group would be still quite valuable. So I'll keep you posted about that, uh, but I'm just flagging in here as well, just so you can edit into your calendars in a case you already if in a case you missed my email um we were having um and the user group just two weeks ago which was february i can't believe um two weeks ago it was still just february and it's already live on youtube i can copy and paste the link into the chat as well um in a case you have missed this um let me let me let me go where is the chat uh, and here, and we are actually having a question uh, by Madeline. I would be interested to know when the next release is planned. Um, I don't know whether Sam, you would like to answer this one. Uh, yeah, I was actually just typing a message in the chat. Uh, so okay. Edinburgh University had some networking issues that prevented the deployment from DMP online, the downtime that we'd set this Tuesday. Uh, but that's been resolved now. So I'm uh, going to be putting a notification up soon for uh, Monday from 9 a.m. to, or sorry, 8 to 9 uh, British time, so 9 to 10 European. Okay, thank you, Sam. Oh, okay, wonderful, yeah. And that is including the conditional questions feature. Uh, unfortunately, that review, that work's still being reviewed. Uh, we've had some delays due to the strikes. Oh. Okay, so uh, it is not. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie. Um, there is a whole list um, of the previous recordings and the following link I'm just sharing here with you. And I, I was asking uh, people um, to be our guest speaker uh, for the months to come. Um, okay, so Sam is also just writing the message or just sent a message. Um, so yeah, we're having the networking issues as already explained. Um, and yeah, expect a notification on DMP online soon. Thank you, Sam, for posting this here as well. Um, and so um, I'm trying to um, get more speakers for the months to come. Um, so thank you, Michelle, very much today for volunteering and for being our guest speaker. Uh, but if any of you would like to volunteer for the months to come, uh, please have a look at our Doodle poll. It will be much appreciated because I think it's quite nice um, just to share the knowledge about how these things work across. Last month we were joined by Judith Carr from the University of Liverpool, and I do recommend listening to the recording because it was it was really interesting of what they do at the University of Liverpool. Um, I don't know whether there are any more questions or points you'd like to raise. Um, so, well, um, remote training user groups sounds good. Our university staff is not allowed travel, and this goes until until 31st of May. Okay, um, that's interesting to know. We in the UK, uh, we haven't been having any um, thing announced publicly just yet, um, which might change today or at the beginning of next week. Um, but I think it might be a way to go forward. But as I said, um, I'll keep everyone posted about this. And um, I'm sure, you know, like with those go to meetings and other ways to contact one another, I think um, it might be um, a way to go forward in April. If you're having any other questions or points, anyone, uh, feel free to either unmute yourself or just type in the chat. If not, I could very slowly wrap up. I'm currently working on the March newsletter. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it just yet, so um, I can't share it with you, but it will be coming out um, in the following week or so. Um, so I might have more information also about the training and user group mentioned in there. So if you're not subscribed, I'm just going to copy and paste the links in the chat again. Um, I do recommend you to subscribe to our newsletter and have a look because it's quite a good place to read about the new features and uh, deployments and also just seeing what's really happening with DMP online. Um, 
do not forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. And as I mentioned, do subscribe to our monthly newsletter. And I don't know whether um, we are ready to wrap up. Um, our next uh, drop-in meeting is going to be on the 21st of April, uh, half past 10 in the morning. And our guest speaker will be Jacques Floor, a research data management consultant from Utrecht University in Netherlands. So. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste the link in here for everyone. And if we have nothing else to cover today, uh, thank you, Michelle, again very much for joining. And thank you all um, for your points and questions. And I'm looking forward to speak to you next month. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.